Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'm gonna to be talking about six of my favorite training shoes for running and lifting. Let's call them hybrid style shoes. Now with these shoes, it's important to remember that when we're talking about hybrid shoes, we have two ends of the spectrum, running and lifting, and typically these styles of shoes will fall somewhere in the middle, and then as you get more specific with any one of those directions, that is where these shoes will start to fall short. So remember, if you are buying one of these models, they will typically land somewhere in the middle, but they might not be your best shoe for like, for example, heavy lifting, CrossFit only training, or running super long distances. But that said, let's dive into my six picks. All right, so the first shoe I wanna cover is the Innovate F Fly. Arguably out of the six shoes in this video, I think this is probably the strongest hybrid shoe I have worn over the last few years. So three reasons why I like the F Fly. Number one, I think it can really hold its own for cross training, lifting, some CrossFit, and then also running. In this shoe, I have run up to five miles, I have deadlifted up to 455, I have squatted up to 325, and the shoe has done a good job. Now, when you pass three plates with squats and four plates with deadlifts, you will notice his midsole start to compress a little bit, but I feel like for how this shoe has been so responsive and performing really well for my running, I'm down to sacrifice a little bit of stability in that vertical. So if you want a true hybrid shoe for doing a little bit of everything, the F-Fly I think will resonate really well with your needs. The second reason why I like the F-Fly is it has a wider fit. So if you want a shoe with a wider toe box, the F-Fly can be a great option to look into. I have an E with foot and I have plenty of room in this shoe. I think for most foot anatomies, you should have plenty of room in the toe box of this model. Now, if you have an exceptionally wide foot that is over a double E width, you might wanna size up a half size in this model just to give yourself extra room. But again, I think for most foot anatomies, this shoe should give you plenty of width through the forefoot. The third reason why I like this shoe is it's super lightweight and breathable. And so if you're similar in liking shoes that have a very lightweight and like sock-like vibe to them regarding their breathability and their overall fit and feel on the foot, then I think you'll resonate really well with this model. For my size 10 shoe here, I have a weight of about 8.65, 8.7 ounces. So that puts this shoe very much on the lighter end of the spectrum. And that's because the PowerFlow Pro midsole is wicked lightweight along with the airy breathable mesh upper. Now, two reasons why I would say you might wanna pass on this shoe is number one, if you do have a narrow foot, you might find that you actually slide around in this shoe. I'm not convinced you'll have enough upper security for your specific foot anatomy. And then number two, if you need a shoe that does have a slightly more biased performance for lifting and stability, you might wanna look into some of the other options in this video that have denser midsoles, but overall, the F-Fly, I think, has been an exceptional hybrid shoe, and I see them as being a really strong performer for somebody that wants a good do-it-all shoe or somebody like a high rocks athlete that needs a shoe for that type of competition and training. The next shoe I wanna cover is the On Cloud X3. So, Unlike the F-Fly, I would say that this shoe is a lot more casual or generalist regarding its construction. It can work for some cross training and some lifting, but it's not gonna give you as much stability as the F-Fly did, and it can also work for some running, daily wear, and walking. So with this shoe, I have run up to four miles and they've been pretty comfortable, and then with lifting, I would say probably cap your loading around 275 pounds in this shoe. Now, three reasons why I like this model. Number one, I feel like it's a really good generalist shoe for anybody who wants that singular shoe for doing a little bit of everything and then traveling with. So for example, if I'm not rocking my Hayes trainer and I'm going on vacation and I only want to bring one shoe and I know I'm not going to have necessarily heavy weights to train with, I'll bring the On Cloud X3. It's super breathable and comfortable for that vertical because it will perform for more casual gym sessions that I plan to do on vacation, but then also the Cloud Tech midsole is comfortable for all day wear, walking and standing. The second reason why I like this shoe is it's breathable and lightweight. So similar to most hybrid shoes, this model has a good level of breathability through the upper construction and then also it does have a nice lightweight feel. So similar to the F-Fly, the shoe will be lighter weight on the foot. And with this CloudTech midsole here, it also has a nice lightweight construction to it. So if you like lighter weight shoes, I think you'll also resonate with the Cloud X3. And then the third reason why I like this model is it's good for a little bit of everything. And now more specifically, I think if you plan to do a couple of miles pre or post workout and you like to do a class here and there and you want a shoe for some light to moderate lifting, that's where the shoe is going to excel the most. And then plus, this shoe does have a nice casual appearance to it. So I think it is a little bit easier to wear with different outfits if you want that do-it-all style shoe. Now, two cons or two reasons I would say to pass on this shoe is number one, if you want a shoe that's gonna be a little bit more durable and a bit more stable, this is not going to be your best bet. In the context of that spectrum of hybrid shoes, this model I would say is a little bit more on the plush and runnable side or the more casual side versus the more serious lifting or CrossFit or cross training side. So keep that in mind with this model, it's gonna have some limitations in those two training verticals. The second reason why I'd say pass on this shoe is if you're somebody with a wider foot or a very high volume foot, you might not resonate with this shoe. I find that this model does give you a little bit of rub here at the top eyelet if you have a very voluminous foot or a high arch. And then also the toe box isn't the widest in this shoe. So if you have 
a wide foot, you might want to find a toe box that's a little bit more anatomical. So look into the F Fly or look into models from like Ultra or Topo Athletic. Now he is back on the channel and he is once again asking me to tell you to subscribe to the channel to help put kibble in his bowl. He doesn't eat unless subscribers go up and YouTube pays us ad money. But that said, back to the review. The next show I want to cover is the Strike Movement Vimana Hybrid Runner. So this model I think is incredibly slept on and you've likely never heard of this shoe. But three reasons why I like the Vimana Hybrid Runner is number one, this can be a really good do-it-all style training shoe. If you want a shoe for some trail running, some outdoor workouts, cross training, crossfit and lifting, and you like a denser midsole. So of all the shoes in this video, this model does have one of the denser midsoles. So you can train wicked heavy in this shoe without issues of stability. And it also does feel responsible enough for some shorter road and trail runs. So with this model, I typically will use them if I'm running anywhere from like three to four miles. If I'm running longer than that, I will go with something more plush. But if that's your training ask and you plan to use a shoe for shorter runs, but then also heavy lifting, that's where the Vimana Hybrid Runner I think is going to excel the most. Another reason why I like this shoe is it does really well with outdoor workouts. This model has an omnidirectional outsole tread, so for more light or moderate terrains when trail running, the shoe does do a pretty good job regarding grip. It's not going to be the most technical shoe on the market, but for that ask, I think it does pretty good. So for example, when I was living in Colorado, I would rock these for short trail runs with Maui, and then I would go lift in them. And I like that they can do a little bit of everything there. Another reason why I like this shoe is its wider toe box and its upper construction. So I actually like that this model has a little bit more of a casual appearance to it. It has a gusseted tongue, so the tongue security is never an issue, and it has a wider toe box. So if you are somebody that likes a little bit more room for toe splay, this shoe should do a pretty good job. I have an E with foot and the shoe fits my foot really well. Now, if you have an exceptionally wide foot, I would say size up a half size in this model. That's generally a safe call for the Mana Hybrid Runner if you are worried about width. Now, two knocks and considerations that I think about with the shoe is number one, if you need a shoe with a plusher ride, this is not going to be your best bet. Again, this is going to be a denser model. So if you like more cushion for your running, whether that be on road or for trails, this is not going to be your best bet. This model is going to give you more ground feel and it's going to feel a little bit harsher and denser on the feet. The second context is you can start to have this outsole lip away from the midsole here after about like a year of wear. So that's when I started to have this issue on my model. Honestly, I feel like for how much abuse I put into the shoe, that's really not the biggest deal because I have abused these shoes in so many different settings, but I would not be surprised if you started to have this issue as well because this midsole can kind of hang over the forefoot here. And I think if you're running and doing outdoor workouts, you might start to clip that a little bit. So just keep an eye on that with this shoe. If you're putting a ton of concrete use in them, but I don't think it's going to be an issue that's going to plague most folks if they do invest in the Vimata Hybrid Runner. The next show I want to discuss is the Nike Air Zoom TR1. So three reasons why I like this model is number one, if you're somebody who's primarily doing classes and classes that involve shorter interval runs, that's where the Air Zoom TR1 I think is going to excel the most. So with this shoe, you have a full Air Zoom packet throughout the sole of this model. So it does give you a little bit more bounce. And honestly, it gives this shoe a slightly softer and responsive feel compared to the Nike Free Metcon 5, which is also more of a class or versatile focus training shoe from Nike. The second reason why I like this shoe is with its midsole and its blend of its rubber outsole here, I feel like you get a nice level of traction and then also responsiveness in the shoe. And that's in addition to the Air Zoom Packet. So with this model, I don't think you're going to have the same breakdown issues that you can have with the Nike Free Metcon 5 because of the exposed foam on the midsole. And so if you want this shoe for outdoor workouts, cross training, or basically running outdoors and tacking on a couple of miles pre and post workout, I think the shoe will do a better job in that vertical. With this model, my favorite distances to run in it is anywhere from like one to three miles. If I'm running longer, I will typically opt for a different shoe. But where I think again, the shoe excels the most is for shorter intervals and classes. Also with this model stability with its midsole here, I've trained up to 405 pounds in the shoe. And I would say probably cap your loading around 365. I think you'll start to notice that air zoom packet a little bit more in this model for that context. So for free weight stuff where you're doing dumbbells, kettlebells, etc., the stability should be plenty fine. But for heavier barbell work, definitely keep that in mind with this shoe. Another reason why I like this model is if you have a narrower foot and you like a lot of upper security, this shoe can be a pretty good pick. You have a pretty aggressive taper here through the toe box. So for narrow feet, I think you will like the level of security you get from the shoe regarding lateral and medial support. And then also up here in the toe box and through the boot here, because we do have this pretty aggressive overlay back here that comes up into the boot. Now two contexts or two cons with this model that you might want to consider is number one, if you have wide feet, 
pass on this shoe, it's not gonna be your best bet. And then number two, if you want a shoe that's a little bit less blocky and has more articulation and more ground feel, that might be a knock against this shoe as well because it does have a pretty high stack height. And with that Air Zoom packet, it is gonna have a different feeling to it. So if you like more ground feel and shoes that give you a lot of articulation through the midfoot and forefoot, that would definitely be something to consider with the Air Zoom TR1. The next shoe I wanna cover is the Puma Power Nitro Squared. So this shoe has honestly grown on me and I was a little bit hesitant to include them in this video, but I feel like this is one of those shoes that you just need more sessions in to break in and then they start feeling a lot better. So three reasons why I like this shoe is number one, if you are somebody that needs that hybrid training shoe that works exceptionally well for some moderate lifting classes and then also some short runs up to like three or four miles, that is where the shoe is going to excel. And now more specifically, that takes me into the second reason why I like this shoe is if you like shoes with a little bit more structure through the midsole. So if you like a little bit more lateral and medial support in your shoes, this can be one of the better options to look into in this list. So like the Air Zoom TR1, this shoe has a nice level of lateral and medial support, but where I like the shoe the most is if you are somebody that likes a little bit more of that aggressive sidewall on their shoe and you're doing a lot of lateral work, that's where the shoe can excel. And with its midsole here, it's a little bit stiffer until obviously they're broken in. You will have a bit more of a structured feel on your foot when training in the shoe. So if you like structured bases or bigger platforms to lift and train on and run on, this can be a great option to look into. The third reason why I like the Power Nitro Squared is the upper construction is nice and lightweight and breathable. And you also have a decent width through the forefoot here. So I think if you have a narrow, medium, and slightly wider foot, you will resonate with this shoe's fit. And the upper construction is pretty lightweight and breathable. You have this booty style construction with this like neoprene material that helps give you additional support, but it doesn't make the shoe overly hot. Now, two contexts or two cons that I would say keep in mind with this shoe is number one, it is a heavier and thicker shoe. So it will take some time to break in. So if you want the shoe for running a couple of miles pre and post workout, I think it will be comfortable, but give it a little bit more time to break in compared to other shoes. This model definitely takes a bit more time to get this forefoot a little bit more flexible for running tasks. The second consideration with the shoe or con that comes along with this model is because it is so thick with its stack height and because it has such like a built out platform and base, it's not gonna give you the most articulation and ground feel. So if you are after max stability for single leg work or feeling the ground more, this is not gonna be your best shoe. I would say look into the F-Fly, look into the Rad 1, or look into the Vimana Hybrid Runner for that ask. The final shoe I wanna cover is the Rad 1. Now this shoe is not up here because it's a superb running shoe but I'm constantly asked, okay, I am trying to send it for my lifting and CrossFit. What is shoe is going to be the best or the most okay for shorter runs in my workouts? And that is where I think the Rad 1 is going to excel. So with this model, I would say probably cap your running to about one to two miles. Typically two miles in any one stint is the longest I will run in the shoe. But where I think they're going to excel the most is if you're doing like 400 or 800 meter bouts. This shoe is gonna be a little bit more lively and responsive than other CrossFit or cross training shoes that give Give you more density with their midsoles. Now, three reasons why I like the Rad 1 is number one, I think this is gonna be one of the more runnable CrossFit shoes on the market. So with this shoe, I have deadlifted over 500 pounds, squat over 400, and the stability has been great. But then also, they don't beat my feet up if I am doing shorter interval runs. So if I do plan to just really send it on some of my lifts and I also plan to run in my workout and I don't wanna bring multiple shoes with me, the Rad 1 is typically what I will opt for. The second reason why I like the Rad 1 is for the most part, the durability tends to be pretty solid in this shoe. So for CrossFit, cross training and lifting, and then also some short runs, I don't think you're gonna have breakdown issues really fast in this model. I do have some breakdown here at the forefoot, but that's because I use my pair for pickleball and I rip them on the court. But in the context of my lifting and training needs, this shoe has held up exceptionally well. You have this TPU wrap around here around the forefoot and the upper layers tend to give you a nice level of support and durability as well. The third reason why I like the Rad 1 is it can be a great shoe for casual wear as well, especially for folks with narrow to medium foot widths. So I like the appearance of this shoe. It kind of has like that streetwear inspired design to it. So you can pair it really well with different outfits. But then also speaking to the width of the shoe, it does run a little bit more on like the medium or like I would say slightly more narrow side compared to other training shoes. So if you have that foot anatomy, I think you'll feel right at home with this model, especially in the context of wearing them more casually for day to day wear and standing all day. Now two cons that come along with this shoe, obviously with the width of this model running a little bit more narrow, it's not going to be your best shoe for narrow and flat feet. So if that is you, I would say look into the F-Fly and that vertical or other CrossFit shoes that will have wider toe boxes that you can also kind of run in. I have a lot of content on that on my channel and on my website. So definitely reach out and ask if you have additional questions there. And then number two, with the heavier upper construction of this model, it doesn't have the best breathability. So if you're looking for like the most lightweight and breathable shoe in the game, 
This is probably not going to be your best bet. The upper layers are pretty heavy, which helps the durability, but it does kind of take away from the shoe's overall breathability. Again, the Rad 1 is not going to be your shoe that you're going to go send five miles in, but if you are doing short intervals and then plan to just go wicked heavy in the gym or just abuse your shoes and cross it, I think the Rad 1 is one of the best options out there for being a little bit more runnable in those contacts. All right, guys, that wraps up this video covering some of my favorite hybrid training shoes. There are a lot of options on the market that can technically work in this performance category, but these are six that I have come to enjoy for slightly different reasons. If you have additional questions on any of these models, check out my written review below. It is linked in the description and in the first comment, or drop a comment and I will answer whatever you have. Just let me know how you plan to use your shoes, what you're looking for, and how you currently train. And I can help you out accordingly, or you can hit me on Instagram, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. Yeah, sorry guys. Let's put this at the end of this video too as a little B-roll outtake. <laughs>